Now that Bruce Wayne is ready to put on the pointy ears and become the caped crusader on Gotham, Season 4 will draw influence from the iconic comic book tale Batman Year One. Created by Frank Miller and artist Dave Mazzucchelli, Year One became the definitive Batman origin story when it was first written in 1987. Retelling the first year of Bruce's life as the Dark Knight, Year One covers everything from Batman's training and the death of his parents to his growing partnership with Commissioner Gordon. Over the following 30 years, Year One influenced numerous animations, live action movies, and even video games. Join us as we explore how Year One shaped some of your favorite renditions of the Caped Crusader, including Batman Begins, Batman Mask of the Phantasm, and even Tim Burton's first take on the Dark Knight in Batman. Released just two years after Year One was published, the first feature-length Batman movie since the 1960s drew upon Miller's story with a twist. The death of Bruce Wayne's parents is a key focus in both stories. Here though, director Tim Burton revealed that it was a mobster called Jack Napier who pulled the trigger before going on to become the Joker. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? The origin of Batman is arguably the most famous in comic book history so it was commendable that Burton decided to alter things in a way that would surprise even the most casual of fans. Through his approach, Burton combined the essence of Batman's origin story in Year One with the Joker's humble beginnings from the killing joke, changing aspects of them both to fit the two comics together in one movie. Originally planned as a direct-to-video release, Mask of the Phantasm didn't exactly set the box office alight. However, the animated movie has since become a fan favorite that directly lifts from Frank Miller's graphic novel in a surprising number of ways. Interspersed with flashbacks, Mask of the Phantasm borrows a number of early training sequences from year one, including one where young Master Bruce trains in the grounds of Wayne Manor. Another scene lifted from the comics takes place early on in Batman's career. During this scene, in both the movie and the comics, Bruce realizes that criminals don't fear him, which inspires him to don the cape and become Batman. None of you are safe. The most obvious parallel between Year One and Mask of the Phantasm, though, is when the GCPD SWAT team chase Batman into an abandoned building. In both stories, use of explosives injure the Dark Knight before he successfully evades imprisonment. Out of every Batman adaptation we've seen so far, Christopher Nolan's Batman Begins borrows the most liberally from year one, recycling a number of thematic and narrative elements to kickstart this celebrated trilogy. Nolan took a page out of Miller's book by portraying Gotham as a corrupt cesspit without hope, motivating Bruce Wayne to forge an alliance with GCPD's Jim Gordon. Screenwriter David S. Goyer described on the Blu-ray release of Batman Begins how he was inspired by the way Miller developed the relationship between Bruce Wayne, the beginnings of Batman, and Gordon, who is not yet the commissioner. Furthermore, characters such as Flash, Loeb, and Falcone originally made their debut in year one before appearing in Batman Begins. A number of memorable scenes are also lifted directly from the comics, including the image of young Bruce kneeling over his parents' corpses, the use of actual baths to deter the police, and that final calling card from the Joker. The films discussed so far may bear the strongest hallmarks of Batman Year One, but you don't need to be the world's greatest detective to see how every adaptation released since owes a debt to Miller's classic story too. Surprisingly, Hollywood has yet to tackle Year One in live action, although there was talk of drafting Miller in to write a script that could reboot the franchise after Batman and Robin. In 2011, an animated version of the story finally hit our screens featuring Bryan Cranston as the voice of Jim Gordon, and Gotham's very own Ben McKenzie as the titular Dark Knight. In the wake of this, it's unlikely that we'll ever see year one in cinemas now, as the origin story of Batman has been told too many times in this fashion. However, we hope that season four of Gotham will incorporate the very best of Miller's tale, fleshing out Batman's early years while reaffirming the legacy that's about to unfold. <laughs>